Survivor Thrivers, authentically me, Regina B is back with another video. How are you? I hope you've been well. I hope you've been in good health. I've been well and I've been blessed to be in good health. So I'm hoping the same thing is true for you. Let's get into it. Wait, y'all listen. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I am a stay-at-home mother of four children. It has been 10 years, 10 years since I have been at home by myself during the day. It is, what's today? Today is Thursday, the 31st, and it is 2.25. My son is gone to work. My children, my three little girls are at school. So I have some space. I have some grace. I have some opportunity to get into this therapy workbook with you. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're not, thank you for supporting the channel and thank you for watching the videos. Thank you, CD. I'm going to shout you out, girl. Um, we are going through the therapy workbook of It's Not You, It's Them. 30 Days of Hope and Help for the Adult Child of a Narcissist Parent. This is the original a therapy workbook, the first therapy workbook that I went through on this channel. And so I decided after some recent events, and if you want to know about those, you can check out the previous videos. Um, but after some events, I wanted to just check back in with this book just to see where I'm at on the journey. I will put the link to this in the description. So if you wanted to check it out and go through it for yourself, you can do that. I really recommend it if you've experienced any type of narcissist abuse from a parent. It is very, very helpful. So let's get into it. We are today 12. 12 is my favorite number. My birthday is in December. My um, Christmas Eve, the 24th, and then I was born in 82. So it's a lot of 12s in my, in my birthday. All right, let's get into day 12. Protected contact. We get by with a little help from our friends, Ringo Starr. Sometimes it's simply not practical to completely avoid contact. Your narcissist may be elderly and in need of physical care, food or medicine, and someone must act. You might find that whatever you offer is criticized or angrily pushed aside, or the narcissist's scathing responses to your attempts to help simply aren't bearable. That's where our protectors come in. It may be a family friend, a trusted friend, or spouse that stands in the gap for you. They screen your calls, go with you to the narcissist's house, read the angry emails, and let you know if there's any content that's worth you knowing about. It can be hard for scapegoats to accept help because we're so good at giving it. It seems wrong to receive it. I encourage you to ask for help anyway. You deserve protection and you can always offer to help them with their needs in return. My thoughts on this, I am not in this situation. And previously when I did this, I was not in that situation. Um, thankfully, I don't want anyone to be ill. I don't want anybody to be in need. And I not know that there's a need because I will help. Um, you know, when my sister had her hysterectomy surgery, she needed a ride, I was there. I was there to drop her off. I was there to pray with her. I was there to pick her up. I took her home. So people know that about me. Like you may not hear from me or whatever, or if I do, it's sporadically, um, but you still know that I'm someone you can come to for help. And I, I don't know that my mother would ask me for help if she became ill or in need of food or medicine. Like I said, I've never been in this situation with her before my instinct is telling me probably not you know as a form of like additional punishment or something like yeah i don't know i've seen when i've gone through different like support groups online of other people like facebook groups of other people who have narcissist parents some of them have said like they told all the siblings don't tell don't tell the lady, I don't, I can't remember her name, but don't tell her when I pass away because she doesn't deserve to know. And you know, that's, that's what she gets or something like that. So anyway, I'm not in that situation. I find it funny that she says, um, where the protectors come in, how you can bring them with you, um, screen the calls, read the angry emails. It's like, 
yeah, the screen and the calls is good, but you can do that yourself. Just because someone calls you, that doesn't mean you have to answer, especially if you're doing something. Like if you're busy, you don't have to answer. You don't have to immediately respond to a text. You can wait, you can pray, you can think about it. You can do something to calm yourself down. If you start to feel anxious, I know back when I was in communication with her, when I would see her calling, I would just be anxious. So, you know, you can do that yourself. Um, as far as go with you to the narcissist house, those of us that know, know, it'll be a while before the narcissist will reveal themselves to people that you bring around them. Because people are always just like, I can't believe and this and that. And it's not until they see, like my friends from 15, 20 years ago, they've been around enough to be like, oh, that again, yeah. You know, and it's just like, yeah, that again. Um, but this time it's, completely different because I decided to remain no contact. And so it says, read the angry emails and let you know if there's any content that's worth you knowing about. That one would probably be a challenge for me. I, it, I, I don't know. That would be a challenge because I'm one of those people that need to know like, what, what, what I did who? So that would probably be a challenge for me, but it's not one that I need to put myself through. So I don't know. And then it, it says, it can be hard for scapegoats to accept help because we're so good at giving it. It seems wrong to receive it. This is so true. It is hard for me to ask for help. I usually struggle until I find a way, you know? And so recently I have become better at asking for help if I need something. And so I, I'm getting better at that, but I, it still is a challenge for me to ask for help to receive help but it's easy for me to give help when needed even if i'm not in the best of head spaces and someone needs something like my niece calls me and just needs to tell me about a work experience she's having or anything like that it's like i can step out of whatever i'm in to be there to help someone and i always end up feeling better after the conversation like it is true. It is better to give than receive. And whenever I do help someone just by listening or sharing scripture or sharing a book I read or anything like that, like I enjoy it, but I don't ask for that in other people. And I don't really get that from other people. But what I will say what I've been practicing doing is if I need flour, I'll reach out to my neighbor and be like, do you have any flour? Um, yesterday I needed to go to the store and so I just happened I know that she's without a car right now and so I asked her it just randomly popped in my head like do you want to go to the store with me and so I normally don't do things like that so I mean that's something that's new um, but yeah you deserve protection and you can always offer to help them with their needs in return so I mean yes you if you are in that situation where your narcissist parent is elderly excuse me, or is ill, I empathize with you. I understand the position that you can be in. And sometimes when I just think about it, I'm like, man, some people spend their entire lives in abuse. Because if they are criticizing you and calling you names and giving you scathing reviews, like she said, of, um, of your attempts to help, that's abuse. And I think it's beautiful when there are people who maybe have an elderly parent who is abusive, whether it's because they're a narcissist, because they've always been an abuser, or because they're like going through dementia or something like that. I always feel like those people are, God got a special place for you because that, I, I honor that in people that are able to do that. I think that's such an honorable, awesome thing. And if you are in that situation, my heart goes to goes out to you. Hopefully you can find a really good therapist to help you through. And hopefully you can find your God-given way of taking care of you. Notice God noticing you. And how, ask him, how can I self-care? How can I soothe myself? What are some things and interests and dreams that I can peek into to help me disconnect? from this abusive situation and just thank him and, and pray to him and go seek his word, you know? So that's my thoughts on that. Let's go on to the affirmation for today. I gladly ask for protection. I'm worth it. 
and we say our affirmations three times, breathing in, breathing out. I gladly ask for protection, I'm worth it. <sighs> I gladly ask for protection, I'm worth it. Hmm, what this means to me. It's my right to be safe. It's my right to be safe. Yeah, that's, that's what comes to me. I can't think of anything else. It's just, it's like, it's my right to be safe. Like, I'm worth it. I'm, it's everybody's right to be, everybody should feel safe and everyone should feel secure and everyone deserves that. So journal to heal, asking for protection. I feel like I'm about to cough. One second. I got it on selfie mode again. I think I kind of like it that way. And just looking at the camera, I feel like the, the quality is a little bit better, but who am I? Who am I to say? Oh, excuse me, y'all. Okay, journal to heal, asking for protection. Make a list of your support people in life, friends, family, spouse, professional therapists and relatives, for example. Beside each name, list what they can do to support you on this journey of being the adult child of a narcissist. Be sure to only include people who you can trust to understand and won't try to talk you into more contact than you, already, than you are ready for or give you advice other than your therapist. So it's one, two, three names. Uh, at the my husband, that first name is definitely my husband. Um, if I need help, just talking things through. If I need help with, you know, telling him about a situation and being like, am I looking at it in a wrong way? Am I, you know, overthinking, overreacting? He's very logical. He's very even keel, almost to a point to where I'm just like, show some emotion. But I think that's how God intended it because I am so emotional and it just works out for us. But he is my support system. Um, if I'm going through anything, I can talk to him about it. Um, I trust his judgments because he is logical and he doesn't overthink what other people do. You know, he stays in his own lane. He runs his own race. He gives that type of vibe. He doesn't, you know, share like his opinions about others. Um, he doesn't overthink what people do. You know, I mean, he's one of those people that if, if he's driving in traffic, I'm the one, and I'm in the car, I'm the one that has to be like, you, you know, you just cut that person off. And he'll be like, oh, who? Oh. Whereas me, you know, I'm driving little Gina B, I'm driving and I'll be like, Oh, dang, I didn't mean to cut them off. You know, I make sure not to cut people off. But anyway, so definitely my husband. I do have a therapist. Actually, I have two. Um, and I can reach out to them if I need to talk about anything, if I'm starting to feel myself feel a lot of tension, feel a lot of stress, or if I just need a check-in. I was just thinking the other day that one of them I'm going to call and make an appointment because I haven't talked to either of my therapists in a while. So just to do like a check-in or something like that. Um, another person would be my friend. I have a couple of friends that I can reach out to for different reasons. Um, if, I, if I feel like I need prayer, um, I have a friend I can reach out to. If I feel like I need someone that's just gonna give it to you real, I have a friend that I can reach out to. And so now it says, reach out to those listed above and ask for help. And that is day 12 done. That was really um, fast. I enjoyed that. Um, I enjoy all of the effort that Debbie put into this book. It helped me when I originally did it. It's even helping me now. Um, and I really enjoy it and I really do recommend it. It's not very expensive. You don't have to share it with anybody, but I'm so glad that God blessed me to discover this. I'm really blessed to have discovered this workbook and it has truly, truly helped me. And it is probably a book that I will revisit time and time again because it is very soothing. 
It's very healing and I do recommend it if you are the adult child of a narcissist parent. So that is day 12 done, guys. Um, yeah, I got to get after it. I need to go to the grocery store. My oldest daughter has volleyball practice. Guys, since everything that has been happening has been happening, life has been joyous and peaceful, beautifully chaotic. <laughs> Cause it's been busy like i've been doing my personal training thing your girl is just taking off like god is just you know any profession that you're in where you provide a service so if it's the hair industry i am a licensed cosmetologist if it's doing physical therapy if it's doing personal training anything like that you will attract to you what is meant to you you will attract to you what god wants to attract to you and the people that have done the consultations with me that have signed up for their personal training sessions they are just it, it's just a blessing they truly are enriching my life as much as i hope i am enriching their lives i had hey then hold on let me i'm trying to think of all of them because i'm excited i have huh? Okay, so I have four regular clients, y'all. That's a lot, baby. And when they sign up for the sessions, they're not signing up for one session. They're signing up for packages. Like one of my clients, I see her every Monday and Wednesday, and she signed up for eight sessions. Baby, that is not cheap. Eight sessions. And then she wants to continue, like she's going to buy another package when this eight is up. And she is four sessions in. And it's just so much fun. I, I feel like this is purpose. You know, I feel really good about it. Um, the yoga, I'm doing a yoga session at this amphitheater tomorrow at 8 o'clock. No, Saturday at 8 o'clock. I'm getting my days confused Saturday. So I am excited about that. The 6 a.m. yoga class is done. Like, the, I did one on Monday. And regardless of if anyone comes, I show up. Um, but really, the only people that are in there are people that are elderly that early like there's some people that are not elderly but it's a lot of elderly people that are in there at that time and the ladies that were coming i didn't have experience with instructing yoga for you know people that maybe don't have a lot of mobility a lot of stability and they don't allow chairs in there um in the studio because they redid the floors and so it just didn't take off. Like Monday, I didn't, no one came, which is fine because I still get paid and I did go through my own little personal flow, but they're gonna just do away with that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna offer private yoga sessions. So I have a few friends and a few people that came to my pop-up yoga event that are interested in doing that. So I'm gonna get with the guy. I'm an independent contractor, but they have to put the pricing into the system because I get a commission. And so I'm going to have a discussion with him about if I would just charge him for like an hour session. Do, do you recommend me sign them up for four sessions, eight sessions, you come in, we do your hour worth of yoga, or do you recommend I just do like a flat rate fee for specifically for a yoga session, if that makes sense. So, and I'm thinking it's probably gonna be the package thing because personal training, yoga instruct, private yoga instructing is, is the same thing. I think the only thing would be like, cause they do have cl other classes in there. Like they got Zumba, they got silver sneakers. They got two other ladies that do um, evening sessions of yoga. Um, they got a strength training class in there. So it would probably be a situation where I would have to plan it around that if I wanna use the studio, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna let people know, hey, I also, as a part of my personal training sessions, I can also offer you private yoga lessons. So that's what I'm gonna do with that. And then my two daughters, my 10 year old and my seven year old, my seven year old is in soccer. My 10 year old is in volleyball. 
And so every day we're doing something because Mondays and Wednesdays is soccer. Tuesdays and Thursdays is volleyball. And this is the longest practice. Like my son's football practices used to be long, but this volleyball is from 6.30 to 8. And baby, like usually at that time, your girl ready to sit down. I'm ready to be sat down, especially when I was getting up at 6 a.m. So it's been, it's been busy, but it's been beautiful. Let me get some water. <clears throat> it's been busy, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's been beautiful. And so I've made it a point to really enjoy my private time and my me moments. When I'm doing my runs, I try to make that just my me moment where I'm not anything or anybody other than just Regina, a child of God. I don't have to worry about my thoughts. I don't have to worry about other people. I don't have to worry about anything. It's just my me moment, my moment to move, my moment to listen to a really good guy to run, listen to some really good praise music, and just let that that movement be my expression of worship and praise. And so I've been really intentional about that. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys are finding opportunities to find out or to seek or to revisit your interests, your dreams, your passion. And I hope you are able to take the steps, faith steps forward toward those dreams, toward those interests, towards those passions, because you deserve it and you're worth it. And that's what God wants for you. He wants you to have a good life. He wants you to have a good life. So that is for me to you. Make sure you find an opportunity to get after whatever your get after is if you are able to get after it. I love you. God loves you so much more.